Hello, my friends. Welcome to EdTech with Adam. And today we're continuing our collaborative annotation series where we compare a bunch of different collaborative annotation products on the market to see which one would suit your teaching context the best. And today we're moving on to Google Docs, one of the most commonly used platforms in almost all of education these days, especially for collaborative writing. However, today we're looking specifically at collaborative annotation. So if you look here, we can see the table with all of the information that I've already put down about Google Docs. Let's walk through these features step by step and see what we can do in Google Docs. So the first thing I'm going to do is import uh, my go-to astronomy resource from openstacks.org. So, so let's jump over to our resource here. I uh, always love these resources. They're free. There are a lot of really great ones that have been peer-reviewed and written. And uh, I'm just going to take this. And uh, for Google Docs, we're just going to copy and paste. So I'm just going to right-click here and copy. You can also press Control-C. And I'll jump back to my Google Doc and I can right click and paste or control V. Let's give that a second for the picture to load. And here we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. We have this thing ready to go in Google Docs. One of the great things about Google Docs is how easy it is to really get your contents ready to go for your class. Now, uh, if you were in a classroom, you may have already invited your students or perhaps you've loaded Google Suite into your learning management system, in which case your students automatically would have access to this when you uh, bring it into your class and publish it. So let's dive right into the collaborative annotation process. So similar to a lot of the other platforms, all we have to do is go in here, highlight something. Now on the side here, it says add a comment. So this is where we'll be able to annotate something. Now I can say, uh, anything really. This is the origins of the universe. Uh, whatever you want to write there, leave a comment. Uh, I can go in another one here and say travel Earth. Uh, let's travel at light speed. And let's do another one here. I'll do my typical radio or television one. Maybe I'm annotating this and getting people to start a discussion on this here. Uh, what TV show are you binge watching now? Uh, so I've made a few annotations here. And now let's jump over to a potential student account. So I'm going to go to another window here. And you can see here... Uh, where the other people are in the text and what they're doing. Let's see from a student's point of view or another person's point of view what this would look like. So see the lights of our cities. And I'll write here, ooh, lights are shiny, <laughs> whatever it is really. Uh, and you can see we have a bunch of different uh, annotations here. Uh, and you can see also that some of the annotations, when you get down to a certain amount of annotations, some of them kind of disappear. They roll up to the top there. So that's a little bit unfortunate for uh, being able to see a nice holistic view of them. In any case, let's just do one more here from a student view and say, oh, 34,000 kilometers. Wow, that's high. Again, of course, when you're doing this in a classroom, you probably want your students to write in a bit more detail, which is no problem here. You can write some pretty beefy uh, annotations. But what about the second item on the table here, which is responding to annotations? So here I can uh, click on one of the annotations that were made by my teacher earlier, and I can say, yes, that sounds absolutely amazing. And let's uh, respond to another one. What TV show am I binge watching these days? I am binging Game of Thrones. Well, that's an old one. I should have said Tiger King. <laughs> but in any case, so yes, we can go in, we can respond to comments, we can engage in discussions on Google Docs. Easy enough. It's been fairly straightforward so far. So the next things are... If I'm a teacher and my entire class is annotating a text on Google Docs, can I single out individual uh, comments here? 
well, I can make the comments disappear and mark them as resolved or hide them, but it doesn't look like I can actually go through and single out what an individual person has said. And similarly, if I'm just uh, going over top of these, well, fortunately, if I'm, I'm hovering over here, I can see that someone's editing it, but I can't actually see who wrote this unless I actually click on it. But even then, I cannot really distinguish or really filter, uh, for example, one student's responses and all, which is a bit unfortunate, especially when we want to grade what the students have done in their annotations or in their discussions. Now let's move on to the next item here. Can we edit the original text? Well, in order to make comments and do these annotations, we have to allow for editing privileges to whoever is looking at this article. And the unfortunate thing about that is it means that uh, if you have editing privileges, you can go in here and here I am on the student account side here, and I could just as easily go in here and just delete a big chunk of text which is a little counterproductive in a class. And so this is why I write in the table here that yes, you can edit it, but it's in red because it's not necessarily a good thing. This might be good for collaborative writing, but this is not a good feature for collaborative annotation because you know, kids in occasion or even adult students can sabotage stuff once in a while. It's not what you want, but it does happen, right? So let's talk about the types of annotations that we can do here in Google Docs. So we've already seen that we can do typed written annotations. Can we do any kinds of drawn annotations? And I say yes with a question mark because if we go into insert here, there is a drawing feature where you can click new and you can kind of doodle around with lines and do stuff. And this isn't really a drawn annotation per se. Uh, it's something that you could potentially uh, put in here and have arrows pointing up to something and say, this is what I mean by this. Or maybe you want to draw a picture of a large amount of liquid, like in this, uh, this annotation right here, and maybe you've drawn the liquid here. So in a way, you can sort of do annotations, but it's not really ideal. Now, what about doing picture annotations. Well, as you can see, if we go here, the only option we have in the comment uh, is to do a text-based annotation. There are no links here, nothing that allows me to insert pictures or videos or anything like that. So unfortunately, from a multimodal uh, learning perspective, it's not the best. In terms of being able to assign completion conditions, like you can in some of the other platforms for, for example, making a certain amount of annotations, unfortunately, we would not be able to set those conditions here. However, if we were, for example, making this an assignment in a learning management system like Canvas, we could use the uh, internal grading systems like SpeedGrader to possibly set uh, some kind of goal. So when you create a new assignment, you can say in the description of the assignment, I want you to annotate at least three times. And when you mark that assignment, perhaps in speed grader or something like that, uh, you might be able to add a, an individual score. However, as far as I've seen, it's a little bit tricky to link up Google Suite with things like speed grader, uh, but it's something that might be developed a little bit more in the future. Now let's move down to talk about compliancy a little bit. And that's always a hot topic, especially since I'm out here in Canada and in Canada, we have FIPA compliancy in America, there's FERPA compliancy in America. Using Google docs is for the most case, perfectly fine. Some schools have special rules about it, but as far as I've heard, the majority of schools are accepting of Google docs for use in classrooms. However, in Canada, Canada, while Google Docs is used, and I've heard about it being used quite a bit, uh, as far as I've heard from officials in school districts, uh, and even at the provincial level, using products from Google are not yet that widely accepted because of issues having data stored in Canada. Like I've said in some other videos, there are Google servers uh, located in Montreal in Canada, and you can set up your school to work out of just those, uh, those servers if you really, really want to work with Google. But 
for the most part, it hasn't been that widely accepted yet. So there's just something to keep in mind. In terms of importable resources, one of the great things about Google Docs is because you can just copy and paste resources, it could be copy and pasted from a PDF, you can insert pictures in, in Google Docs easily enough just copying a picture off of Google and pasting it in here. Uh, videos, you can even paste uh, things like YouTube videos in Google Docs as well. So there are a lot of things that we can uh, import into Google Docs. And one other thing that we didn't show yet is that when you bring in one of these things like a picture or a video, you can actually annotate that thing. You can't annotate with videos, like you can't annotate something and add a video or a picture, but you can annotate on a video or a picture by clicking on it and then clicking on the, the comment button. And then you can say something like, this picture is so awesome. Which is good because in that way, while it's not quite as multimodal as it could be, it still includes that option so that you can bring in those multimodal resources and do text-based annotations on them. Let's wrap this up by looking at which learning management systems that Google Docs works with and, and whether or not it works by itself. Well, of course it works as a standalone platform, but one of the really strong things, and of course, because Google is so huge, they have talked with most of the learning management systems out there. So you can embed Google Docs in Canvas, uh, Brightspace, Sakai, uh, Blackboard, Moodle, almost any learning management system, maybe not all of them, but a large number of them, as many as I can think of off the top of my head. All right, that's it for Google Docs. I hope this was useful for you. And again, as you're watching some of these videos, you're getting a better and better idea of which collaborative annotation tool would work the best in your personal learning context. As always, please let me know if you have any challenges with ed tech that you'd like to solve, something that you'd really like to be able to do, but you haven't maybe found a way to do that yet. And I'd love to do some comparisons, make some videos about it. And please remember, if you like this, leave a nice subscribe, a like, leave me some comments down below. That'd be really great. And remember, learning is everything and everything is learning. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.